Hi, this is problem 6.1. So we are working here with trusses, simple trusses. And in this case, we have this example, and this truss is composed by one, two, three, four, five members. We have a simple support at A, and we have a pin at C. And all the dimensions are given, and the only external force is this over here, which is for 450 pounds. So, the first thing that I would like to remind us is that I will assume all the members to be in tension. So when we have a member in tension, for example, AD, we will have forces in tension. So this will be, for example, tension A. D, and this will be also tension in D. We don't have any transversal force, even though we have pins, because those are weightless links. And every, since we don't have any force in the middle of the member, we don't have any force perpendicular to the member. Therefore, if we do the three body diagram of pin D, we will have exactly the same reaction in opposite directions. So anytime that we assume the members to be in tension, the forces that this member creates to the pin goes out of the pin. So all my free body diagrams will have the reactions of the members pointing out of the pins. Okay, having said that, the first thing we like to analyze is that if we have any zero force members. If we look at pin B, there we see that we have two members that are collinear and one that is non-collinear. And we don't have any force applied to this size. Therefore, this here is a zero force member. So it will be the same as we have this truss without that member for the applied load that we have only this one over here. If we have another load over here, then that member will not be seen. Some students ask, ask me, well, but if, we are, if I analyze this pin, then I have three that are not collinear, and then a force. It's true. If you analyze this pin over here, D, the joint D, you will not be able to say that this member is zero. But since when you analyze join B, and that is the rule that when you have two collinear and one non-collinear, that is zero. Therefore, is zero in the other joint too because the forces are equal. Okay, so let's do the free body diagram of joint D. In this case, we are using the joints method. Why do we start in joint D? Because in joint D we have only, since this is equals to zero, we have only two unknowns because we have only two members that are concurrent at joint D. In this case, for example, we have two members but one external force. And here we have two members and also two external force. So we could not start at C or at A, therefore we start at D. So my join D, and then as I said, I will draw the forces going out of my pin. This will be reaction TAD. This will be reaction TDC. Do I call it the A or the C? As I said, they are going to be the same in both sides, so I can call it AD or DC. It doesn't matter. And then I have, those are reactive forces, and then I have my active force, which is 450 pounds. And then I have, of course, I need the angles. Since this is four feet and this is four feet, I know that this is 45, and this is 45. So that is my free body diagram 
of my joint D. Now that I have the free body diagram, and I, I can apply the equations of equilibrium. Equations of equilibrium, this is a particle, so I have only two. Adding forces in X will be equals to zero, and that's the component of TAD in X, which will be sine of 45, which is square root of two over two, and this goes to the negative. So the axis that I'm using is X and Y. So this is a negative in X direction. And this is positive, square root of two over two, which is sine of 45, and minus 450 equals to zero. So this is my first equation, and I have two unknowns. So let's add forces in Y. And in Y, I have negative TAD cosine of 45, which also is square root of 2 over 2, minus TDC cosine of 45. And this is equals to 0. From here, we see that TAD is equal to negative T d c and I plug that into here and I can solve for both and that gives me a value of t d c is equal to 318 pounds and it's positive that means since it's positive it means that this bar over here, or this link, or this member, is in tension. And we found that this one over here, the AD, is the negative value of that one. Therefore, since it's negative, it's in compression. It means that this force is pulling this bar, and it's compressing this bar over here. Now that we have that, and we have this one over here, we need to find these other two. To do that, I will do the free body diagram of joint A. And in joint A, I have two members, and I, as I said, I will always draw them going outside AD and TAD. And this is also 45 degrees, right? And I have an external force, which is the reaction force of my roller, so that's A, Y. So this is also a reaction, so this is like an external reaction. And those are internal forces of the members. Now that I have that, I can apply my equations of equilibrium. And again, I will have two. I add forces in X equals to TAD cosine of 45 plus TAB that is in X direction and I don't have this doesn't contribute to the X axis right so it's equals to zero from here I can find TAB 225 pounds and it's positive Again, therefore, is also in tension. Adding forces in Y will allow me to find AY, but we are not asked to find, in this case, the forces in the external ports. We are only asked to find the forces in the members. Therefore, I will not add forces in Y. 
my final, uh, remember that I have to find the force is in this one right here, and therefore I do the free body diagram of joint B. And since this is equals to zero, the joint B has only two forces, TAB, which I already found, and TBC. And as you see here, adding forces in X means that T negative TAB plus TBC is equals to zero, therefore TBC is equals to TAB, which is also 250 pounds. Also positive, it means that it's also in tension. And we were able to find all the internal forces in the members of this trust. This is the solution of this problem.